I say we must see Jesus. We must see him in his incarnation. So we got to get to that point to understand. That's why Jesus said in John 20 and 21, he said, then Jesus said unto them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, also I send you. So whatever the mission that he had, our continual mission, mission, uh, mission is to make sure that we are a representation of what Jesus exemplified. Amen. That's why we read scriptures in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. Not the world to come. Most of us wait to get on a on a cloud, get a harp, have our feet kicked up. That's carnal wisdom. No, no. There's an objective that God has on His heart. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor that's an objective that God has on His heart. That's why we went to Ephesians three. There's something a mystery that's in the earth that has to come to fruition, and the only way it's going to come to fruition. There has to be a level of maturity. The only way we're going to mature is that we got to get the correct information. That's why we're in Reformation. So that the information can become correct. If the information becomes correct, then there will be a house, a people, a group of people. A, 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 the church, the ecclesia, will be able to have the original blueprint. Yeah. Amen? So we can grow. Yes, because there's an objective that God has for us. Amen. We've been taught that he just wanted to save us to make sure we get to heaven. God wanted to bring heaven here. Amen. That's why when we started off, we talked about That's why he gave us the prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God has a will to be done in the earth. Yeah. So we got to discover what's God's will for us. Amen. Jesus told us to pray about it. So <clears throat> our continuing legacy must be about finding out what the Father's intention was from the foundation. Tell you later, we got to find this out. And that's why I told you we have to enter into exact representation. And that just means whatever God, whatever Jesus exemplified, there has to be a reflection in his body. Amen. Amen. We ought to walk like he walked. First John 2. First John 2. Oh, that was a lot of scriptures, huh? I know. I don't know. I, you know, sometimes we have a busy week. Mm -hmm. I want to get a chance to get in the Bible. So you come to church, you learn to get this. <laughs> Look at 2 and 6. What does, what does that scripture say? He that says he abided in him of himself or to walk even as he walked. Ain't that powerful? Yeah, that's powerful. As he is, like I said, in, if you go to 4 and 17, it says, because as he is, so are we in this world. That's how the systems that be, be it in the religious system, the secular system, Educational, science, business, all of those systems, those mountains that are in the earth that skew the vision that God has given to all of us. Somehow we've got to make up our mind. We've got to let him make up our mind by discovering God's purpose as it relates to why we are brought into this level of consciousness, this level of awakening, so that we can somehow be detoxed from the religious system. It has lulled us to sleep. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we've made up our mind just being uh, born again is enough, just being a, a member of a church is enough, just to be affiliated with this church or that church is enough. And if I can just get to the building and I can just find a seat, if I can just be faithful in that seat, if I can be faithful in that ministry, it's enough. It's not enough because there is a cry being projected among us. There is a sound. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? If, there's a dysfunction that is elevated in the earth across all landscapes. There is confusion, Babylon, as I call it, confusion in the earth, be it in the church or out of the church. People have no direction. We got gender issues. We got a lot of things going on. 
Therefore, we got to make sure we don't represent a dis or, uh, or distort what God's purpose is for our existence. He has a reason for our existence. Tell your neighbor, there's a reason for you existing. There's a reason, for you existing. Yeah. The reason why he brought you out of that darkness into his marvelous light. It's the reason why he wants to sanctify you so that he can present you holy to him. Not just so you can be sanctified. And so you can make it in at the, you know, when everything is over. No, that's not... That's not that's what that's what we've been taught. But we got to get to the point to understand that he wants us to be a representation of what the kingdom of God is. We are the verifiable proof that it exists. Without the manifestation in our life, then the kingdom is limited on its extent on how it can affect society. If it doesn't touch us, if it doesn't change us. <laughs> Yeah. then we are operating in fraudulent practices. Yeah. Really, this church should be sued for being a fraud. Right. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, could I say that? Yeah. Well, Y'all yeah. in my house. Yeah. We have been, you know, we need to be sued. Right. Because we've been fraud, we have fraudulent activities in the body of Christ. We have misrepresented yeah. what the kingdom is. Yeah. What God's purpose for us. Yes. And I'm going to give you a couple of places. I'm going to put double dog there you to, check, to just wrestle with it for on your own. <laughs> Hopefully not for your own destruction. But it will kind of provoke you to love and good works. I'm going to show you through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Something. So let me just make a couple of statements. Hmm. According to what we read, the Father has long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. Mm -hmm. The precious fruit of the earth is a people coming into maturity. Jesus said, if I don't die, I'll buy it alone. But if I die, I ain't going to be by myself. Come on. Right? He said there's going to be a fruit mm -hmm. that's going to exemplify what I did at Passover. It's going to be a month. That's my first translation. A, <laughs> there's going to be a multiplication of that seed that was sown. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the kingdom of this world is mm -hmm. going to become the kingdom of our Lord and Christ, Something has to happen to the church. The church has to be redirected. And if we're not willing to turn or repent, same thing, or refocus, because that's what Reformation comes to comes and say, hey, look, you did it this way for so long, but it's incorrect. There is a more excellent way. Hmm? The church ain't eye candy. We ain't a trophy. There's an objective that the Father hid on the inside of him. And we have to get to the point to understand that objective. Now go to Obadiah. A little place that's over in the book of uh, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's called a minor prophet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm found in my walk with God and my fellowship with the Father, I've discovered that uh, there's some major things hidden in minor places. Yeah. Yeah. Why everybody want to hang out in the big books. <laughs> I hang over in places like Haggai and Nahum and Obadiah. Yeah, yeah. And there is a treasure trove mm -hmm. of revelation. Tell your neighbor. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. But look at this little secret. <laughs> look at this thing. I'm going to show you something. Ooh, I should have went to Ephesians 4. Mm -hmm. Y'all know it. The reason why the church is existing, why you got fivefold ministries, is that the church, the body, can go into the measure, the stature, and the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's that's that that is the precious fruit of the earth. Body ministry, joints and ligaments. Yeah, coming out of the valley of decision or the valley of indecision for some. The same thing that Ezekiel prophesied about. Can these bones live? He prophesied to the winds. He prophesied to the bones. Things began to change around. Amen. And it became an exceeding great army. Remember that story? That's in your Bible. Yeah, it is. It's in your Bible. It ain't just a story. It's in your Bible. <laughs> now look at Obadiah. Look at this. That, you know. It says 17. Obadiah 17. 
It's only one chapter, so if you, if you in Obadiah 2, <laughs> so with a great Lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we need to talk about it. <laughs> you know, there were other books that didn't get added to the Bible, they didn't found them. But upon Mount Zion, <laughs> but upon Mount Zion, there should be what? Deliverance. Deliverance. And there should be what? Holiness. Deliverance and holiness. Where? In Mount Zion. Hold that spot because I need to prove that we're here in Mount Zion. <laughs> Hebrews 12. I know there's a lot of scriptures this morning. Yes, but I wanted to. We love it. Yeah, because other people are watching, not just y'all in here. <laughs> so we got to be mindful. How many know we've come to Mount Zion? Yeah. Hebrews 12 and 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels. So Zion is where? In the church. Yeah. We have come in Mount Zion. Yeah. Right? So let's go back to Obadiah. So it's, 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 even though Obadiah was talking to Edom, to a physical nation, the book is, you know, there's historical relevance, prophetic implications, prophetic implications. There's this, look, look at this. But upon Mount Zion, but upon the church, not, not just, oh, I ain't got time. So be deliverance and what? Holiness. And the house of Jacob should do what? Possess their possessions. Hello, house. When deliverance and holiness is present in Zion, in the church that we are part of, what happens? We possess things. How do you know if they're, guess what? If there's no deliverance and holiness, guess what happens? We're possessed by things. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm. Yes. Amen. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But when deliverance and holiness is there, when things are being removed, and you exemplify the nature of God, you possess your possessions. Which means I find out my purpose. Yes. But it ain't just for that. For you to have Possess things. Because that's what the church has been taught. Name it and claim it. Grab it and blab it. Am I right? Come to Jesus. He's going to make you rich. 